So we're back onto this again. That's oh, turned a bit windy. Now I'm doing the fun job at the moment, so I'm gonna drain the oil out of it. So I've just pulled that plate off. And then up in here, there's a drain bung there, and then there's one back further. So according to instructions, you drain the bottom one, and then you drain the top one it's just to get what else is left up in there. It's the uh, equaliser spring there, so they sit on that spring, and then that allows it to let the track frames to oscillate. And then it's on these big arms at the back there which help stabilise and hold the truck frames in alignment and let it pivot. So I reckon I'm going to spill some oil. I've got some uh, containers there. Let's see how we go. So I got the oil out. It was a bit hard to film all that, I started make, getting a bit messy there, but I didn't spill much, so that was good. I'm just going to leave both those bungs out for a while and um, let them drain. In the meantime, I'm going to pull these filter housings off. Pull the oil bath filters off and pull the floor plate up. Found the other brake pedal in behind there. I better weld that back on, eh? Looks like I'm gonna keep getting more diesel out of it. I've got a container underneath it. Fair bit of hay in there. That's good thing I got them off and give a good clean. I've got to work out what I'm going to do with these two lines here. Probably loop them back round up at the front there. And then we're going to pull this cover off the clutch here because there's a break in there for the for the hand clutch. When you push the clutch forward, it puts a brake on to stop the tar shaft from turning. I'll have a look. So I just got these all lines off that went back to that filter. So there was this one and then one down where it drains back into the sump there. So I just got to look at um, teeing that, them together or blocking them off. Well, they're a bit over full of oil. It says there, caution, oil level must be flush with the top of center peak, which is here. These are up over there. There's a fair bit of stuff in there. Oh, that's all right, that's doing its job. I'm gonna scrap that in, into a plastic bag or something and then wash them out. You know, I can wipe down inside that pipe there too. That's not that bad. Little viewing glass for dust. Get the dust out of them. So 
I've just been making this uh, seat frame up to put the other seat in. Cutting some new bits of timber. There, this will bolt onto to there. Just gotta weld them on now. through there and then it hooks on through there as you slide it down. So once I've got this made up I'll um, get in and take this fuel line out, pull that tap out of there and then I think I can just swing that round and join it up to this joiner here. I'll have to have a look. So I'll get this out of, this out of the way first now. And then uh, probably start getting in there and just picking all that stuff out of it by hand, some of it, before I wash it. So just going through all the gauges I got that turned up. The original ones are Stuart Warner. You can still purchase ones virtually like that. They've got a nice chrome bezel around them. Um, they're not as easy available down here and they are quite expensive. So I've just gone for the VDO ones for now. So I've got the voltmeter. The only odd one out is the fuel pressure, but that'll be fine. The rest are just VDO brand. So I'm gonna have power coming up into a key from a fuse, and then the positive from that will go to the voltmeter. One will go to one side of the oil pressure switch here. And the other side of that switch will go to the hour meter to power that. So once it gets all pressure, it'll start running the hour meter. And that's the only power I need for the gauges. The rest are all mechanical. The fuel pressure, I've just used this original line and still soldered the fitting on for this copper tube here, which came with the gauge. That'll screw onto there. And the rest will just screw onto the gauge. All pressure, I may only need a small piece of this line that came with the oil pressure gauge just just join up to this block and then that'll screw back onto the original pipe that comes from the um, engine and then I just got to look at the water getting this to screw into what's there now so just some simple wiring then we can start installing the gauges so I've got the these lines off and I was going to turn this around but I didn't realise it's actually welded in the tank so I can't point this in that direction so I ended up getting the tap off pulled it apart so I can actually turn it have room to turn it around it wasn't I don't think it's really working anyway it seemed pretty tight and still dripping so I'm thinking about just fitting a just a little hand tap in there, ball valve or something like that, and then we'll probably just run a flexible line down, maybe down under there, and then clamp it under here, just to be a half inch flexible line. And I'm gonna take all this old battery cable out, it's all frayed there, and I've got a new line to make up to put new battery cable in. As you can see, this lead coming off the solenoid to the starter motor gets power in it when you um, engage the starter and there there's quite a few bare wires showing so I don't know what it's like underneath or it's touching the cover so I'll make up a new one from here to here as well and then I've got to run a power lead from here up to my new key just to power those two gauges I've also been working on these seats so the bottom one is just a square board which is easy but this top one or well, the backs of the seats are a bit more involved we have to make these little lugs up and then this bit here 
gets into the slot. I'll show you when it's all done. So they, they fit now. I've got to pull them apart. I'm going to put some sealer on there just because it's um, it's only a plywood. Put a couple of coats of sealer on there and then get them up to the upholsterers. Get some new cushion I'll put on. So I've just given a bit of a uh, quick wash anyway, just to get most of the bulk of it off. These come up a lot cleaner anyway. Um, I've got to get into them covers to have a look at the um, steering brake adjustments. So I'll check them out. Got this fuel tap turned up. Just a little, just a little ball valve that will screw into there. With a hose into that part there. One thing I noticed, washing, I didn't wash it too hard here, I didn't want all the gravel to go into the paddock, so. But I was paying a bit of attention to this. See the gap in there? You see how close this is here? This uh, this has dropped down, so. Looks like these bolts have come loose or something like that. I was looking in the book there, it actually looks like there's nuts in the inside, so I'm hoping I can Jack the chains up, or chain up, lift this up, get them bolts out and replace all them bolts. Yeah, you can see it's dropped a bit. Just, just been working on the battery cable too, so I've got some new cable here. Just some crimp fittings and just been crimping them on with a hydraulic crimper. So this one I've got to run from the stove motor back to the battery box this is another one I've got done so I've got a bit of heat shrink on it looks professional I've uh, got most of the gauges in now the hour meter went to put in and it had a um, unusual shaped hole so the gauge fell through so just got the blokes at work to cut this little flange out out of stainless either I got these holes measure these holes wrong well they're not actually an equal pattern but it doesn't really matter I'm not really using the holes it's going to clamp from the back just got to hook the water line up now so I pulled this fitting out of the, the water manifold there that was screwed into there. And then I found another eighth NPT to screw into the sensor here. I think they all come up all right. There's a fuel pressure one. And then I just gotta run a power lead from here up to my key. And that's uh that's it all that the gauge is done. I had this off the other day. There's not much oil in there, and that's probably why the steering was a bit sort of slow to work and didn't feel quite right. Yeah, it's only just touching the dipstick. So this is a reservoir in here, which is pumping oil back to your for your power-assisted steering clutches.
So I've got this cover off. Uh, all the brake band and everything looks okay in there. It's got plenty of uh, material left on the shoes. So I'm just looking at why this brake pedal is not coming up. I have noticed that pin is hanging out, so it's not right through to the other side there. And I've also noticed that I just move that. That whole bracket there is pivoting and the bottom bolts are loose. So I've got to try and get under there and tighten all them bolts up. There's four bolts on there. You can see one there, one on this side and two on the bottom. And then there's a hole in the side of the uh, housing there which you can you're supposed to be able to pull this pin out. So maybe I can get on there with a long thread and try and pull it back through, but I'm not sure actually what holds it in there. It's going to be a tricky one. I don't give you a lot of room. As you can see, it's uh, pretty difficult to get down in there and it's pretty uh, black on the sides. It's all just thick grease around the outside, but I've got the top too tight and already the uh, brake feels a lot a lot more positive. I'm just trying to get the bottom one in, but that's actually out quite a few turns. And we've got this uh, sewer socket in there. I'm thinking a moment after to um, maybe get a what is it, 15, 16 a spanner and cut the ring off and just have a short one so I'll get there and turn it because I'm up against the back of the brake band. So I ended up uh, just getting a old 24 mil spanner, which is pretty close to 15, 16, and cut it down. I can only just turn it like that, sort of in between a bit of channel. I couldn't do the bolt up, so I ended up pulling it out, and you can see where the thread's damaged. So I wasn't going to do up like that because it's been loose for so long. So I'll get a new bolt. I don't think it needs to be that long, and there's a lot of thread going in there. I think I'll make it a bit shorter, make it easy to get in. I've got the other side off. I'm just checking that one out. That seems okay. I've just been adjusting these hip pedal heights the same. And then we'll just set the uh, free play on the clutch band by adjusting that nut and get it all back together. So I've got a shorter bolt here with a spring washer this time, which is actually listed in the parts. It's supposed to have some washers on them. So we'll try and get that in there. All the way down there. Gotta sort of sit in a bit of an awkward position here to do it, but anyway. Oh, I've got the blade down as well. And I'm just putting a bar in the tar shaft here with the lever in the down position. And then just turn the motor over and it just slowly went down. It's a bit safer to climb under now and yeah. So I've got all that in now, uh, got the covers on, I've adjusted the brakes, so I've got three inches of free play, got the pedals even now, adjusting the rod, lubricated all the bushes and all the pins, and then once you've set that you turn this adjuster here till it touches the cover and then go a quarter of a turn all that does is centralize the brake band on the drum so that's all done uh, I'm gonna look at these next I notice one of these pins in here has got like a, a small bolt just a bit of play in there you can see that uh, and then actually what I might do now is run this new cable through
just got this bit of uh, rubber hose which is split I'll put it into these brackets here for the cable tie I'll tighten them up once I've got it in the right spot so there's one there one up there and then there and that um that I'll tidy the cable up the original ones had ones on there with um, hose clamps but I think the cable ties will be alright might even put one round here for some reason they didn't really seem to worry about that bit did they alright that's come up alright I'll just run the other one through got to cut that shorter I might even try and utilise these thread bosses on the tank here to fasten it to I've just got the fuel tap in now fuel line Also picked up a radiator cap. There's a place called Queensland Tractor Spares, and they had uh, caps listed for Alice Chalmers tractors. It said non-pressurized type, and it also had the measurements on there. So I just measured it up and purchased it, and it looks like it's the right one. So that's it. Lovely. I do have to make sure that this tube here is clear. The tube runs down here at the radiator and down because that is the the vent tube and you don't want it to block up otherwise it will start to pressurise so I can check on that and I'm just looking at these filters got these filters turned up I had to make laser cut some gaskets for the bottom here and then the way I've got it set up here I also had to cut a bit of insertion rubber to because these uh, filters got a pretty big hole in them so there's nothing sealing the bottom off so we've cut that there that fits tight over the bolt and then we'll seal that off looks like it's the right length I was just checking the length with the spring and the filter that looks right now the parts book lists as this is fuel fuel and oil and these this one and this one they're listed as the same filter so we're just using the same filter in there because it isn't actually a full pressure oil flow full flow it actually just I think when the engines finished with oil it comes into this cavity fills it up and then just drips back into the sump once it's been filtered so I can see why they probably put different filters and stuff on them but for what I'm going to do with it I think factory will be fine so we'll get them on I've got an O-ring. And this washer. And the filter. Washer. And spring. I might stick the washer on there. Oh, gasket. There we go. Now I've got to look in the book there. When you turn the fuel tap on, once I've got fuel in it, I think you open these air vents so they just fill up from drain from the tank. But I think you've got to switch this valve around so you can do this one 
and then you do this one with this little tap here and with the oil one I'm not sure there I'll, have to, I'll double check the book but another job done they look out of place now don't they so now we come to a bit of an issue when I first drained the oil on this uh, a splash of water came out which I just assume a bit of condensation from sitting for so long so I put the bung back in filled the radiator up and left it for a couple of months and the radiator went down and sure enough when I pulled the sump plug out it um, a heap of water come out so it's getting water into the sump now um, there was a bloke re reached out to me from the first video who um, wanted to talk about the GM because he worked on a lot of them and knew a lot about them he um, recommended all these different if I change injectors and all that sort of stuff he could give me a hand on what, what runs what ones to use and all that sort of stuff so I reached back out to him and told him what was going on and we've come up with a few options because I mean it's pretty rare for these to get water on something but but obviously not impossible my father's a diesel mechanic and he's worked on a few of them and he hasn't seen water get into something but he has worked on them before because there's no water around the actual sleeve they're a dry sleeve so it's not like it's a sleeve with the with a hole in it or anything like that um, I've checked the injector tubes you pull the rock cover off and there's little tubes in there they can leak around there and they're drier so it's not that and uh, what I did do though was I ended up pulling the oil cooler off which is down in there which is this here now if it was the oil cooler it would be actually pushing oil into the water but I never actually ran it long enough to even know if it was doing that but we have checked this uh, we've got the radiator, radiator guy and we did lots of pressure checks on it and it's nothing wrong with it, it's fine I have seen sometimes they get a corrosion through like here and they can get water out when they're sitting there but this one's fine so I'm going to get some gaskets and put all that back on I think really the next spot would be to pull the head off and maybe there's a gas gun in there or some corrosion around the liner but I've decided for now I'm going to continue on and get it going because it's not the best spot to work on here if I do have to pull the head off probably end up pulling the belly plant pan off as well maybe even pull the sump off um, so I'm going to continue on getting it uh, up and going got to fix this roller still got to do that clutch check some other linkages so I'm going to get the oil on it get it all ready to go I probably might even check the injector clearance as well while we're going uh, and then the last thing I'll do is pour water in and then fire it up straight away so I'll probably use it a bit too and then we'll see what else needs actually doing to the machine get it up close to the shed and we'll go from there I'm going to put a tap on the drain bung see with a ball valve so I can just check it and if it starts going milky then I won't keep using it obviously you don't want to keep using it like that um, yeah keep an eye on the fluids but so that'll be the next video so keep an eye out for that one